Forecasters say the fourth tropical storm of the Atlantic hurricane season is strengthening as it moves west. Tropical storm Dorian could hit Barbados tomorrow and Puerto Rico by late Wednesday. Tropical storm watches and warnings have been issued ahead of the storm. The National Hurricane Center says it could reach near hurricane strength by Tuesday. For more on this, let's bring in CBS News weather producer David Parkinson. David, where in the U.S. might be in the path of this storm? Well, so Puerto Rico is certainly in the cone immediately, and then we watch towards the weekend at the chance for making it to South Florida. Now, it's got to do a lot of things right to make it all the way there, uh, but the real concern is this storm is looking a lot better. If you take a look at what the satellite looks like, you can see right there it's starting to form an eye. It's starting to get a little bit more symmetrical. That's not something that we had seen before, and even, in fact, the winds have gotten a little bit stronger, so the winds are up to 60 miles an hour. It was 50 and 40 yesterday. So as it inches its way closer to the Barbados area, it's going to continue to strengthen. We're looking at a 65 mile an hour wind speed early Tuesday morning as it makes landfall likely in one of those places. And then by the time you get to Wednesday into Thursday, it's making that transition potentially up to a category one storm. Now you can see that Puerto Rico is in that cone of concern, particularly the southwestern two thirds of the island. It's important to remember that cone of concern is the error cone. It is not the cone of where all of the impacts are going to be felt. So it's got a fairly small wind field. However, it does have uh, a lot of rain associated with it. It has the ability to bring storm surge and we know that their grid is so fragile to begin with. And then as the storm makes its way over the Dominican Republic right there, the further west it tracks in that cone, the worse for the storm, the better for us that it is. And that's because the mountains of the Dominican Republic really shred storms. But if it makes it just over the eastern tip of that island and skirts up the Bahamas, it's possible at the end of that track there, you see some of the models taking it towards Miami. Is it going to be a strong hurricane? No. Is it even going to be a hurricane? Probably not. But nevertheless, you have a potential for a tropical system towards the end of the weekend. You know, often when we see these storms, they'll, they'll impact land somewhere in, in the Caribbean and then they hit warm water and re-intensify. Right. Is that just not a possibility here? So it's an interesting sort of uh, back and forth in terms of what we've got. Uh, you've got a really good chance of a wind field here out of this storm, but it's not all that large. The wind field's only about 90 miles across. However, the thing that's preventing this storm from becoming really strong, see that little green blob there? That's what we call shear. That is the difference between the winds at the the ground and high up in the atmosphere. It cross cuts the hurricane like a shredder and it can't allow it to intensify. So the water's plenty warm, but that shear staying out ahead of it the entire time, that's what's neutering the storm. And David, I want to ask you, there is an Axios report uh, about the president suggesting detonating nuclear bombs into a hurricane to stop a hurricane from hitting the U.S. Um, NOAA, the government's weather agency, is, has one of them anyway, has said that that's a bad idea. Uh, why? Uh, well, so particularly, I think that the best way to describe it is you'd have a very large hurricane cone of a Superfund site, which is even if you detonated that store, the bomb in the storm, and it did work somehow, which it wouldn't, um, you'd have nuclear fallout being carried by those winds over a long area. So uh, it's a really uh, dangerous idea, quite frankly, in that sense. The other thing that I've, I've been really harping on people is, is people don't think of hurricanes as nature's sort of energy and heat release, but they really are. It sucks up a lot of the warm water, a lot of the heat in uh, and in the ocean, and then it regulates the temperature a little bit. So if you made a storm less strong, if you diverted a storm, something like that, you're just leaving more fuel for an eventual thing. It's sort of like that unintended consequences of, of fires situation. The more you prevent fires, the worse the, the big one eventually becomes. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one of those things that even if uh, you're not talking about bombs, you're talking about some other kind of mitigation, the problem is, is that at some point, uh, the chicken will come home to roost when you're dealing with hurricanes. And I should note, the president has tweeted a denial of that report. And actually, if or if not, he, he said that he would not have been the first president to ask a question about bombing a hurricane. Right. No, so these things go before. all the way back to, to the Eisenhower administration. Uh, the, the thought of not only controlling weather, but specifically hurricanes is not a new concept. People try to research it because we see the kind of devastation they can bring. Uh, but unfortunately, the more you mess with Mother Nature, the more she tends to mess back. David Parkinson, thanks for your time. Sure thing.